Greetings, St. Andrews. Uh, my name is Peter Klein, and I teach uh, theology at St. Francis College, and I'm happy to be with all of you uh, this morning. The Gospel reading for this week is about sickness and death, or rather, it is about responding to sickness and death. Mary and Martha's brother, Lazarus, is ill, on the verge of death. Knowing Jesus to be a healer, they urge him to come and attend to their brother. Jesus, however, offers a curious response. As the text reads, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Jesus then stays two days longer where he is before going back to Judea to raise Lazarus from the dead. What struck me about this passage, reading this time, especially in light of our current global situation, is the potentially offensive logic of Jesus' relation to Lazarus' sickness. Presumably, Jesus knows that Lazarus is gravely ill and will, in fact, die. And yet Jesus does not immediately respond to the urgent request for help. He delays, and as he tarries, Lazarus dies. And why does Lazarus die? so that he can raise him from the dead, showing those around him that he is indeed the Messiah, the Son of God, sent from the Father. As the text reads, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. What strikes me as problematic here is that Jesus, at least at this point in the passage, is instrumentalizing Lazarus' death in order to make a point about himself. He is turning Lazarus into an object lesson. Jesus lets Lazarus die so that he can show off his power and convince those watching the spectacle to believe in him. But what about Lazarus himself or those who love him? What about their pain and grief? Jesus doesn't really give any attention to that. What matters more is that he is glorified. At least that is how the story is initially set up by John. And I cannot help but hear echoes, however faint or distant, of certain voices in our world today, Christian voices among them, that would let the vulnerable die for the sake of securing a version of the economy that we think we can't live without, for the sake of glorifying money, we might say. But then comes this moment in the passage when Jesus arrives at the scene of Lazarus' death and something else, at least momentarily, opens. As the passage reads, When Jesus saw Mary weeping, and the Jews came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. Confronted with Mary's grief, as well as the grief of those with her, Jesus' own grief at the loss of a friend overtakes him. In the Gospel of John, Jesus is usually not short on words. But here, if only for a moment, Jesus, who is the Word, offers no words, only tears. For a moment, there is no theological point to be made, no crowds to convince, no triumph to proclaim. There is only a dead brother and friend and the pain of those who loved him. It is such a human moment, a moment that can't be instrumentalized or put to work. Of course, the narrative moves beyond this moment and Jesus, the wonder worker, takes center stage again to raise Lazarus from the dead and convince the crowds to believe in him. But could we, perhaps, not rush past this moment? Perhaps it is to this moment that belief, even belief in resurrection, must continually return. This moment when Jesus is indistinguishable from the crowd, from our fragile relations, from our love and pain, from our flesh. In this moment, Lazarus' death 
ceases to be instrumentalized and is instead honored and witnessed. Lazarus is loved. In this moment, the word becomes flesh, becomes our love, our weeping. Just yesterday, I heard from a student that her mom died in England last week, and that because of the, all the current social restrictions related to COVID-19, she was not able to go and say goodbye, not able to gather with family and mourn, not able even to organize a funeral. Like Lazarus, the beloved one dies at a distance. Such stories, I am sure, will not be uncommon in the coming weeks and months. And like Jesus, we are perhaps discovering a grief that we did not expect. A grief that interrupts our narratives, our plans, our lives, our identities. What might it mean to stay with this unexpected grief? To let it overwhelm and undo the status quo? Not to rush past it in order to continue the narrative we thought we were living, but to let a new sense of our humanity emerge, one in which we care and attend to each other far more deeply than we thought possible. That might be one way of thinking and living resurrection in the face of death. Amen.